Corey Castleman. I am the President and Chief Revenue Officer at In Live Wellow. I typically like to start my day with some type of physical activity. Certain days I'm more energetic than other days, and that's a focused workout, you know, with weights or running on the treadmill or riding a bike. Um, other days it's as simple as just going out for a walk on my own or taking the dog for a walk. So I'd say one of the most important things in terms of a healthy way for me to start the day is to exercise. And then, you know, often followed by a great big cup of coffee, which is a bit of a vice and we all have them. But in addition, I would say finding uh, space in your morning to make sure that you have a good healthy breakfast to set yourself uh, off on a good day with uh, nutritious fuel in your body to tackle your day. the most important way to stay happy and feel healthy and motivated throughout the day these days is to ensure that I'm carving time out in my day to connect with my family, to connect with my girlfriends, um, to just really spend time with my kids. And we're all sort of adopting uh, new practices and sort of adapting to this new normal. And so I think really checking in with one another, both within our own homes and living spaces, but also outside of our homes and living spaces is just really, really critical to our own mental health. Um, and it's an incredible support to others too when, you know, when you're reaching out, I find it gives me energy, you know, it gives the person who's doing the outreach energy, but it's also a wonderful, you know, connect point for the person that you're reaching out to, to know someone is thinking about them, you know, to find an opportunity to laugh and commiserate and sort of share this wild world that we're living in today together. I think it's really, really key. I can typically tell very quickly that I'm getting stressed because I start to get quite impatient um, all across the board. So personal, professional, even with myself. And often I have folks in my life, colleagues, family, uh, friends who will call it out for me. Uh, and I'd say the best thing for me is just to get some physical activity. Uh, running is a great outlet I've used much of my life. And so I find a good run solves many problems. And uh, I will share with you that it is not unusual for my husband to say to me, do you think you need to go for a run? in a very helpful way. So it's become sort of common knowledge with folks who know me that a good run solves a lot of problems. So I would say the biggest thing for me is sort of setting a schedule for my day each day. I can't typically do it for a full week in advance, but when I get up in the morning, if I just try and carve out a couple of chunks of time that are personal time for physical activity, for connection with family and friends, and then just a little bit of quiet time. You know what, I need a little alone time. Not everyone does, but I am someone for my own mental health and stress management. I just need a little bit of quiet time every day. It can just be an hour, you know, a, a bath or a walk or just a little bit of time to read. And so I try and carve all three of those out each day. In terms of working remotely these days, which is obviously working in our homes where we're living and, you know, connecting with our families, but also doing our work. I think one of the most important things is to set up a dedicated space within the day where you're doing your work and then also very consciously shut that space down to some degree to move into, you know, your evening time with your family, etc. So, whether you have a dedicated space where you can set up, you know, a home office uh, and sort of go in and out of that space throughout the day or not, even if you're setting up in a kitchen counter or whatnot, I think just really ensuring that you, you know, you shut your laptop off, you sort of close any notebooks that you use throughout the day and also shut your phone off for some period of time that you give yourself time just to really disconnect from your work environment and be at home, be with your family, take that personal space because you know, you're right back at it the very next day and it can start to really wear on you from a mental health perspective as the week goes on 
to never feel like you've had a chance to disconnect or get away from that work. My biggest focus in supporting staff throughout this period is just really making sure uh, to find time in our connect points each day to ask people how they're doing and to really also create the space, you know, for myself and for us to have some time to receive that answer and to be able to respond to it in a very genuine and empathetic way because I, I learned very on very early on in this time frame that the way that I'm feeling is could be very different based on my environment and I have my kids and family in my home with me than someone else on my team who perhaps has had to social distance on their own in an apartment and can feel very isolated from their family and friends because they don't have someone in that space with them every day. And so I think just being conscious that although we are unified in this experience, our personal experience can be very unique. And you know, finding that opportunity to just connect and ask people how they're doing, give them an opportunity to share and you know, kind of commiserate around where we're at together, but also be able to talk through how to manage our unique circumstances and share advice and tips with one another. I think in times of stress, it's often the moment where you start to gain the most strength as you've gone through the experience and you come out of that experience. You realize that we are all stronger as a result of it and you feel that own strength for yourself, having you know been through a difficult situation, realized that you have adapted and overcome and you're now on the other side of that you know, you do so with an enhanced sense of strength and confidence around any future challenges that you need to take on. So I think it's important to remind ourselves of the fact that we are building strength and resilience as we go through this um, current state together. We will come out the other side of it. You know, we are all going through this together and I think we're stronger as a community and frankly, globally, the fact that we're all experiencing this challenging time together um, is making us stronger, you know, just generally as, as a human race to have a shared experience, regardless of our culture or physical location. And so, you know, I think just reminding ourselves of that, this is a very, very challenging situation for so many reasons, for so many people. Um, and we're all, you know, having different experiences throughout this, but our shared experience is the fact that this challenge has been sort of thrust upon us and we are, you know, guiding ourselves through it somewhat blindly at certain points, but we're, you know, we're taking steps forward every day and we're going to become stronger as a result of having been through this experience together. And I, I also just want to add that I am incredibly grateful, as I know we all are, for the unbelievable resilience and, you know, dedication that all of our frontline workers have. I mean, many of us have family and friends who have been, you know, out there in the community, whether as healthcare workers, emergency services, you know, even supporting um, our the provision of groceries, food, etc. So. I just want to also add how incredibly grateful I am personally for the folks who are doing that. Um, it's, it's an unimaginable amount of stress to go out and do that every day and we are so grateful.